Welcome to Art 1120. It is October 27th. Uh, we're going to cover texture and pattern uh, this week and also go over the icon project. So let's move. into this section. Okay. Get this out of the way. I think it's just blocking. Okay. So here is the the final icon object. Uh, Alexandria, this is uh, really good work here. Clean. Um, I, I'm going to make this uh, critique of almost everyone's design. While these things look good, these small lines may look good in the larger view, uh, they get lost, it's obvious, in the smaller views. So uh, figure out a way to, now some of them, it's not bad, but these will get lost and obviously in the smaller view. And this is a critique of everyone. The, um, the design work is done really well. I think everyone has done a good job of being creative as they're uh, working on these projects. So some of these look, um, I mean, all of the designs look really good. Obviously you spent a lot of time coming up with these. I like the in between the designs in this, the line thickness being the same, uh, similar, We've got the rounded corners on these different things. The ends um, are similar across the different designs. Corners look good for what Monica's done here. Uh, one of the, this is one of the ones where the small, uh, there isn't really smaller lines and so they don't get lost in, the definition doesn't get lost in the smaller phones. So, Joshua, this is uh, good here. Um, something that was interesting about this, uh, I really liked how you've shifted these and made these completely square. I think this looks good. It adds also to some of the texture on the phone. Once again, we're the detail, we're losing a lot of the detail here when it goes to smaller icons. And one of these, one of the things I think we maybe should do is see how this looks uh, when we pixel these, when we move these to, um, if we change these to just like 64 by 64 dots in here, and a lot of this will, um, even in this, we're not really lo losing the resolution that we normally would on an icon. So something that, once again, I'm pointing that out on most of them. The creativity is really good on this. Um, all this communicates well um, what these objects are. But if we have to look at the big one to understand what's going on in the small one, it makes the small less effective. So here, once again, the here's where we see where the larger uh, line weight makes a difference on the smaller icons. Um, I maybe would have made this, which isn't going to detract from the design at all, uh, made this um, made the fork here uh, wider. But the thickness of all the lines, and this is, this is really creative the reverse, the negative effect on that one. So 
Sage, this is good. One of the things that makes this really effective is the line weight are the same across all of the lines. So that brings a, a sense of unity and balance um, across all those. And Sage, totally feel your frustration uh, when it comes to equipment and technology. It just can be um, really, really irritating. So we will. One of the things that we get to see here is how small these are and how much detail is gonna, that may end up being lost. Like on this phone, it makes it harder to see. We will, I can make this larger to see, see that a little bit better. This looks a little squished here, but it looks a lot squished on this one. Uh, however, with the squirrel in the church, that's obvious. Uh, the cross could be made a little bit bigger to to be easier to view. Um, one of one time, I was working with an artist, and he said a, a logo or an icon needs to have good fitness, which means it looks good big and it looks good small. We lose we're losing that here. And when I go smaller, so Brega, this um, Bridget, uh, this uh, good lines easily understandable what the objects are. Once again, uh, with this, I think the lines need to be darker, and it does look like on the smaller designs. The lines are darker, but I think if it, I think they would look just fine in the larger designs if it had thicker, thicker lines. So, uh, Anthony, this is fine what you've done here. I like that you've been creative on your phone. Um, same critique I've had of most of the designs. These lines uh, don't translate well into, if this goes a lot smaller, um, not not that you need the lines there, but if you wanted them to be more pronounced, uh, you just need to make those wider. Yeah, and like other people have noticed that that fish is, is good. And, and I will say your line weight, like on the camera and the fish, and for most of the object is good and would be uh, would have good fitness and look good at small. Abigail, this is uh, done a good job here. I like the unity that you've created with the circles and put the objects inside of those. Um, even though you do have some thinner lines here, it does not detract both on the fish and on the book on the smaller icons. The cool thing about this is you could do a negative of this turn. I mean, have a black, have a white square with the black lines. And it, so the fitness on yours is really good. So Lorraine, we're working on getting her to have that share correctly. Once again, with the lines that Jaylee, this, um, illustrates my example, especially with your car tires. Um, and we actually lose the meaning too much on the small, uh, on the bank, we might be able to, maybe you should have made the dollar sign larger or across the whole thing to see it on the small one. So the same thing with the, we are losing some of the definition with these, especially with the car tires, but also with the phone ringing up above that. And I like your, um, I like that you used Photoshop to do this. That's a good thing. And it does, it's obvious what these things are, especially in the large. 
uh, we did like lose the cross when it went smaller. And maybe with the elephant, uh, you could have extended the face down, made the trunk a little bit shorter on the, uh, to make it more recognizable on the small set. Arlo, this is also creative. Um, really good movement with the dog here. And I do like the abstraction of the bike. And it is nice to see the, uh, once that pointed, I didn't actually notice it until you said that about the uh, praying hands there. All good examples. One of the things I think you will, without making the lines larger, um, you will probably lose some of that definition when you go to the smaller icon, but this is creative. Here, this also creative. I With this, once again, with the thin lines, if you take this to a smaller version, which we can do with, uh, went the wrong way on that. We can see this here if we go a lot smaller that um, we're losing some of the definition in the lines. Of course, this is way down at the bottom. So. So overall, uh, creative, good work from everyone. Now we'll move over into the slideshow presentation part. So here's the pattern and texture. Um, so as we create these visual compositions, our goal is to evoke some kind of emotional response from the viewer. And, so, and pattern and texture are used to do that. And we'll explain the difference between pattern and texture um, and how we can use these in our designs, the difference between tactile, implied, and visual texture. Obviously, uh, the patterns and the texture create similarities uh, between the design and build in some symmetry and uni uh, unity. So cartoon, these cartoons are always fun. And it is fun to be in an art museum where you can touch some of the exhibits. So pattern and texture is important for us to understand so we can accurately compare and can contrast the differences between pattern and texture. So pattern is repetition of design and it's regular and anticipated. And so they can either be simple or they can be uh, complex. And patterns can also occur naturally. So on all of this is, so here we've got this pattern of similar, we, we look at the boy on the left and we can see he's got similar models or actresses that he's posted up there. And then over on the right, we've got the design. We've got a pattern that is evoking probably more stability. Now, one of the things that we often will do is try to fill a blank space. And just like with the boy, it starts to, um, it starts to give a sense of confusion and uh, chaos here if the pattern where on the right, it brings a more a feeling of uh, peacefulness if the patterns 
a little bit better, but all of this is evoking some kind of promotion, emotion. And just because you think you need to fill up a space with some kind of pattern doesn't necessarily mean that you do. So here is tessellation and geometric patterns. Uh, so pattern usually begins with uh, a unit or shape. And then the tessellation is this tiling. Uh, so this is where we can uh, create the predictable pattern. So here is, or here is tessellation in geometric patterns. So MC Escher here is very creative on the way he handles these designs. And when you see these at first, you may see either the red fish or the white fish. And then as you change your focus a little bit, you see the other color fish. Same thing with the Pegasus in the white and brown version. Obviously, MC Escher here is very creative in the way he handles that pattern. So, so the texture and pattern, their similarities are they both change the quality of the surface. Texture, however, arouses our sense of touch. And for the most part, texture is more irregular than a re than a where a pattern repeats. And the texture makes it feel like service has a certain type of quality. So here, as we look at these years, we can all um, we get the idea of what it would feel like especially on the left to what it would feel like to touch those things. And then in these pictures, uh, they, we know what it would feel like to touch the dog or also to touch the cactus quills. So those would be sharp and painful, especially if we were pushed up against them. Um, but they can help evoke the emotion that the artist is trying to portray. This is cool too. Because we first get in there and we realize that these are houses. And then we start to look closer at the different texture between the roof and the walls and the, the painted, like the doors, we start to notice all those uh, texture. So there's tactile texture and visual texture. So some of them can be stuff that we can actually touch and other ones is just something that we would know what they felt like. So here we are with the dry wood and the twine. We, we've all felt those things. And we remember what they would feel like if we, however, we do not know for sure because the, there could be something on there that we can't see that would change the touch. And then over to the left, um, snow, and that would be cold. And then with this one is a design, um, something designs that, that tries to, the subversive texture, tries to play with what we understand. So here with the plate, the spoon and the cup covered with fur is something that we don't expect, but we understand what it would feel like if we touched it. So we're, impasto is a technique probably made most famous by Van Gogh. And this is where the paint actually has texture. So this is hard to see through a picture, but if you see the original, there is quite, he's basically like he, he's put the paint onto the um, canvas and then 
made the paint really thick, thick enough that it has texture if you got up close and looked. It's interesting to see the way he used, sometimes even instead of a brush, he would use the brush handle to um, create the texture on the painting. So, um, versus the old masters, um, um, I've seen some paintings that are, that was the classic style where they wanted it completely smooth, where you didn't see any brush strokes at all. So I've seen, uh, it, uh, let's see, coming to mind, Da Vinci, uh, Michelangelo, I should remember. It almost looked like a photograph. You had to get up really close to see even brush strokes on people's uh, faces. So here's one where we've got both uh, texture and pattern that, so the brush strokes there, even though it's just two dimensional, it gives that feeling of texture, tactile texture. So, and then collage, is where we've created different types of materials. And just in this century, it is only become legitimate as a medium because we're becoming more open-minded about art. For similitude is where it's accuracy and faithfulness is in the display in the depiction presentation. And then there's Troy, which it means to fool the eye. And my one of my first design classes, the teacher explained where an artist had painted on a canvas that looked like a lady was undressing in the corner of the room. And he'd done such a good job. His wife got really angry because of the way it looked. So here is one where, so this looks like that it is um, stonework where this is not really stonework. This is really a painting to that they've tried to make look like it was an actual, like it was something else. So just remember that uh, pattern texture are similar but different. Uh, there's with the texture there's the tactile implied and visual texture and then you can use texture and pattern to create unity and other emotional effects and then evaluate the effectiveness of these things and this is something that you should include in your critiques of your especially with um, your fellow classmates. Thanks for joining this week. We will see you next week.